Okay, welcome back. <laughs> so this 10 millimeter MMP 2.0 Smith & Wesson review is long overdue. It's even longer overdue since I filmed the whole thing tonight and forgot to turn on my audio. So there you go. Hopefully version two will be even better. But kind of a little backstory. So I've had this since December. I've done a few videos with it. I've done a trigger pull video. I've done three range videos with it uh, versus just first impressions versus a Glock versus the XDM Elite 3.8 inch. And Shuk has also done a video with it. Initially, just to get this out of the way, when I first purchased the pistol, my pistol protocol and testing has always been you just take it out of the box, you shoot it, and I like it just to kind of be the standard baseline. Unfortunately, when I did that with this, and even just rack the slide, so the pistol is safe. When I racked the slide, it was extremely gritty. I mean, I could tell right away that it was gonna be an issue. And so when we hit the range and we had a malfunction, I wasn't surprised at all. Now I got a lot of viewer comments and they said, hey, check out the manual and basically do what the manual says. Smith recommends that every pistol be lubed before you go out and shoot it. So I'm gonna roll some footage of that, but basically I took your advice, I went back and I lubed it up with the eight points of lube that they recommend. Took it back out to the range for another trip you know, with 180 grain SMB, I believe in 180 grain MagTac range ammo, full metal jackets, what I've shot through it so far. And it was flawless, it just ran. So, and it felt a whole lot better. Now, I see why they say to lube it because when I took it down, and I'll throw some footage into that as well, but it, the rails were just dry. Everything was completely dry. I didn't even have to clean it. So, once I lubed it up, it was good to go. Uh, so let's dive in here. Basically, this m 2.0 comes with two 15 round mags. Now, that's kind of my sore subject right now, but I mean, it's kind of the issue that everybody's facing. Shortage of magazines, shortage of everything, right? And long wait times. Well, uh, these magazines I've been very impressed with. They feel very sturdy. They run perfectly. 15 rounds, fits in that grip very thinly. I'll talk about the grip here in a second, but um, so great. I can get my full hand around it. I still have spare room. I mean, mag release on this thing just sh shoots them out. I, I can even, I can even, I've got it vertically, or not vertically, but horizontally right now at 90. And you can see it just shoots the mags out. So, great magazine system, no complaints there. The magazine release button is ambidextrous. Uh, you can, it's interchangeable, I should say. It's not ambidextrous. You can change it out very easily with the tool. Uh, moving on, so the grip. This grip is phenomenal. And I'm not sure if they had 10 millimeter in mind, I'm assuming they did. I don't know what MMP 2.09 millimeter grip is like. I'm guessing it's similar. But this is like the most rough sandpaper grip um, that I've ever felt on a stock pistol. And, and I'm saying that in a good way. I love this grip. I love how it covers the front, covers the back, covers the full sides, and you feel it. And when you're shooting it, there is no issue with control. Now, I thought I might have a pistol that compared to this grip, which would be, I was thinking my Hellcat. I thought my Hellcat felt pretty aggressive, and it does. It's got, you know, pretty aggressive sandpaper grip, but once I felt them side by side, I mean, there's no comparison. The Hellcat is like fine grit sandpaper, and this is like coarse, and you could probably even see it on camera. Um, the other one that I was thinking of comparing it to, because this is the only other Smith pistol I have right now, is the CSX, and kind of the same thing. It's got a finer grit, whereas that's coarse, and maybe you can see it there. 
But as for me, I'm, I know I wouldn't want to carry this with it rubbing on any part of my body, but in terms of 10 millimeter and being able to control it based on the grip, this is good to go. I've also got, this isn't a comparison video, but I've got the Glock here. And if you look at a Glock, there's just no comparison in the kind of grip you can get. Um, this Smith is hands down way better. Now that kind of brings us into the grip width too. If you look at the Glock and look at the Smith, the Smith is so ergonomic now. I couldn't find any width stats, so I went ahead and busted out my calipers. The widest point on this pistol is going to be the slide release, because it's ambidextrous, so it's not really a great reference, but I got it at about 1.440. Now I kind of like the slide or even the frame is a little bit wider, the top of the frame. So that's 1.166, which is very impressive. And then if you go to the widest point of the grip, you're looking at about 1.25. If you go to the narrowest point of the grip, which let's just go up to the top here, the very top of the stippling, you're looking at 1.12, just a little over 1.1 inches. Now to me that's very impressive and it feels every bit of 1.1 inches when you've got it in the hand. It's hard to believe this is 10 millimeter with how easy it is to get your hand around it, how it just kind of, the grip just kind of disappears in your hand and I, I just feel like I've got so much control when I'm shooting this pistol in spite of the fact that it does have uh, more perceived recoil than the Glock 20. I definitely noticed that. More perceived recoil than even the Springfield. I'm not sure why that is, but it might be. Yeah, I'm not sure why that is, but that was definitely the case, and I think some other reviewers have noted that as well. So moving on, we've got steel three-dot sights. Standard Smith, but these are suppressor height, so could throw a threaded barrel in there and shoot it suppressed if you want. Uh, in terms of the trigger, I really like this trigger. I did a trigger video on it, but I'll just kind of recreate that really quick here with the Wheeler trigger gauge. Uh, basically trying to get it set up at the bottom of the trigger safety here, which is difficult to do on camera but I think I got it there. All right, so that was not a good pull. Let's, let's try that again. As I said, it's difficult to do on camera. There we go. So that was pretty close to the bottom. You're looking at between five and a quarter and five and a half pounds. And I've got pulls right at the base of the trigger down here as low as even four and three quarters pounds so let's just walk through that trigger pull really quickly you basically you got a bit of take up and it's and it's just i wouldn't say it's smooth it's it's not gritty either i mean it's just not it's whatever it's just get through it to the wall but when you do get through it there's a very defined wall there's no mistaking there's a wall. There's no false wall, no second wall. You're just there and you pull and right around five pounds later, it's a very crisp break. Now the reset is pretty short. I keep thinking it's gonna be a little bit longer than it is, but that reset is right there. So very impressive trigger. As Smith says, it's their flat faced. And this is a huge improvement over the the old MMPs with the hinge trigger. I just couldn't stand that. I had it on a shield and just hated it. So um, Smith is always always getting better. In terms of the slide, you've got these scallops. Originally they were on the bottom, which didn't do a whole lot. Now on the bottom, 
of the slide and the top of the slide and they work. I mean, for those guys that like to press check or do that a lot, I mean, it's it's almost a little bit painful when you really bear down. You, these grab you, so they definitely did a good job in, in designing these slide serrations. No problem getting purchase on the slide. Uh, you can see here the, the lightning cuts. You've got a steel frame underneath the polymer, which gives it more rigidity. You got the pick rail. You got your 4.6 inch barrel, uh, which is stainless steel. Uh, you got the Armonite finish slide. I've never had one, so I'm looking forward to seeing how durable that is. In terms of the takedown, basically Smith talks about their sear deactivation system, which means that you don't have to pull the trigger like you would do with a Glock to take this down. So basically you're going to pull the slide to the rear, push up on the slide release, which locks it in place. You're going to take a tool of some kind. I've got a little punch here and you're going to reach down inside the open slide and you're going to see a little yellow, little yellow wire, not a wire, but a little yellow metal tab, which deactivates the sear. At that point, you're just going to take your takedown lever, rotate it down, release your magazine release, or release your slide release while holding onto the slide, and your slide's just going to come straight off like so. And obviously at that point, it's just your standard takedown procedure. Recoil spring guide rod out, barrel out, and then you've got your basic field strip. So I'm going to throw it back in really quickly here. Reverse the procedure. And get that slide back on. I'm going to lock it back like so. Rotate, rotate the takedown lever back in. And then I'm going to release the slide and we are back in business. It's just that easy. Now there's other other pieces of the Smiths that are thought out equally as well. You have a takedown lever built into the back of the grip, which is really nice. You just rotate this piece, pull it straight out, and then that releases your back strap, like so. I've got the small back strap on it. You do have the option of a small, a medium, a medium large, and a large. And if you want to put one of those on, it's just as easy. I'm going to actually put the takedown tool in the back so you can kind of see how this works. There's also an adjustment for trigger take up. Um, on here as well. So basically, I'm just gonna reverse the procedure, get my little tab into the top of the grip, like that, push it in, get my takedown tool, reinsert it, twist, and that's it, you're back in business. Which brings us to the dot system on top of the slide. So, gotta say kudos to Smith for going straight ahead and releasing the MMP 10mm 2.0 with Red Dot Ready. A lot of companies are still releasing it without. Not, not this particular model, obviously, but releasing models without Red Dot Optic Ready and then uh, several months later, they'll release the dot, and I know that's to get more sales. It's to get an initial release and then to put out the dot so they got more longevity in their marketing and probably more sales overall. So kudos to Smith for just going ahead and not dealing with that nonsense and just releasing it with the dot. So kudos to Smith for doing that. So Smith's dot system, basically, I'm going to pull out the manual right now and you've got a seven plate system that comes with a smith including the screws that you need. Uh, you've got 
plates one through seven. Plate one is the Trijicon RMR. And then you got a number of others. It comes in this handy bag with all the screws. I'll just hold up type one since the RMR footprint is the most common still. But you've got basically most options that you can think of. The Dr. Footprint, Seymour, Loophole, Delta Point, J Point, Crimson Trace, Insight, Nikon Spur even. So you've got a lot of options with that. So I think that about wraps up the things I wanted to cover with this pistol. Um, oh yeah, it is a 564th hex wrench that you used to take, take off the cover. Um, in terms of the other specs, I said 4.6 inch barrel, 7.9 inch total length, and then 29.3 ounces unloaded, which is not bad at all. So that's about it. As I said before, we're going to have a video where Chuck and I get together and shoot the full power loads and test those. We got comments from viewers about springs and having to replace springs perhaps. I do not know about this being full chamber support or not. I have searched high and low everywhere I can think of to see if this it has full chamber support for 10 millimeter like the, like the Glocks and I've not been able to find anything. So I'm, I'm assuming at this point that they're not fully chamber supported. Hopefully Smith can clear that up. In terms of hard cast, so this is a traditionally rifled barrel. I don't know if that'll show up on camera or not, but this is a traditionally rifled barrel. So theoretically it can and should be able to shoot hard cast. It's not, it doesn't have the polygonal, polygonal rifling. But anyway, that's it for now. My plan is to do the hard cast video test and then to do a thousand round review. I'm keeping tabs this year on all the rounds through all my guns. And at this point, I've got 169 rounds through this and I plan to do a thousand round review Hopefully sooner rather than later since I possibly am going to carry this this summer for bear protection. So stay tuned and drop any comments you want uh, about what you've heard or what your experience with is the 10 millimeter. I'd love to hear it. Is this a buy for you? Is this a pass? I'm still glad I got it, uh, but time will tell in terms of the double tap, the buffalo board, the underwood, how that performs. So as always, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Check out my Patreon if you get the chance. Thanks for joining me on the journey. LW Road, out. <laughs>